So you know what our lead is. It comes from the NBA. It seemed like just a standard early April night of pro bouncy ball, but it was not. It was not standard at all. We started in Denver where someone named Keldon Johnson and someone else named Devin uh, Vassell. I don't even know who that is. Uh, They each scored 20 points. The Spurs upset the Nuggets in the Rocky Mountains. And so that meant that the Lakers were on the clock. They had to win or face the Eliminator. Uh, and I don't know if you saw this game or not. Maybe not. Maybe you don't, the ratings are not that great. Maybe you weren't watching. So the Lakers actually led this game by eight early. They were in the Valley of the Sun. They led by eight early. Phoenix then put the pedal to the metal and ended up cruising past the junior varsity team in Los Angeles. A, a 121-110 win. It wasn't even that close. Devin Booker had 32, DeAndre Ayton, 22, 13 rebounds, and the Suns led by as many as 26 points in the second half. They had a little pep in their step. This was extra special, twisting the knife in that open wound, and the Suns, who were ridiculed by Anthony Davis, the big mouth there for the Lakers a few days ago. Uh, In the end, it is Phoenix that puts the Lakers' season officially in the body bag and then zips the body bag close. Now, LeBron James did not play. Didn't He was there. He was in street clothes. LeBron didn't end up playing in the game, and he allegedly had a bad ankle. But that is the story. He is the story, as he often is. LeBron James, this is his creation here. He is omnipresent. This is the roster that he handpicked. So let us discuss the question. Is this Laker team missing the playoffs a clear referendum on LeBron James' legacy? In the NBA, 1,000%. 1,000% on the Maller scale of humiliation. 1 to 10, the Lakers, failing to even get in the play-in tournament, scores a 436. That's the highest score we've ever given out. This is the single most embarrassing moment in NBA history for a team perspective. And the Lakers have that. Congratulations. Now, Uh, My thoughts here, you've got property management, baloney, and Clydesdale. And we will tie all of these things together, and uh, we are going to make a nice, wonderful wake is what we're going to make because we'll stay awake at the wake. Now, A, it is a flabbergasting outcome that will surely haunt LeBron James. And even the biggest LeBron suck-up can't, Pass this one off. Now, we expected the Lakers would be bad. We talked about this during the summer of last year when the Lakers put this team together. But this was the Hindenburg. We didn't expect the Hindenburg. Uh, We knew it would be bad. It was a tinderbox floating in a bathtub of gasoline with an open flame above it. But even in our wildest negative dreams, we never thought that it would get to this level of debacle. It is a dandy Don special. Turn out the lights. The party's over. LeBron James has just authored the single most embarrassing chapter in NBA history. His name's on it, and it's on Laker history. How great is that? The 2021-2022 Lakers will live in infamy. And LeBron's fingerprints, his fingers are all over this. I mean, think of him like a a guy in property management, except LeBron is a slumlord. That is what LeBron James is. He's a slumlord. How bad is it? The NBA, a couple years ago, expanded the playoff field. So instead of eight teams, which is enough in each conference to get in, instead of eight teams, the league added the Fugazi play-in tournament just as insurance in case a glamour team that the NBA management supports, like the Lakers, somehow have fell on hard times. So a, let's add a couple extra teams. Just, just We'll call it LeBron Insurance. LeBron Insurance, right? And so they added a couple extra teams. So now there are 15 teams, if you know the math in the NBA. There's 15 teams in the East, 15 teams in the West. Ten out of the 15 teams in each conference qualify for at least the play-in tournament. So that means you have a 66.6% chance of making the postseason. But it's actually more than that, considering there are several teams that aren't even trying, that don't even want to get close to the playing tournament. But at 
66.6%, which is uh, the sign of the devil. Uh, the Lakers are now even below that. So in the, they're in the bottom 34% of the NBA. And keep in mind the teams that are ahead of them, the Pelicans, played all year without Zion Williamson. They're in the play-in tournament. The, the San Antonio Spurs unloaded Derek White and Thaddeus Young during the season for draft capital. They raised the white flag, said we don't want to be in the play-in tournament. They're in the play-in tournament. Now, even better than that, even better than that, I present to you the Trailblazers. The Blazers unloaded C.J. McCollum, their second-best offensive player, they also had a bunch of guys who missed games, some of them legitimately, some of them not. Damian Lillard has missed a, a whole chunk of time here this season. The goal was lottery balls. Now, the Blazers aren't in the postseason, but did you know LeBron's Lakers have a worse record, 10-28 and 28 in the second half this season than the Portland Trailblazers, who are 11-27 and 27 and have admitted they're not trying. They've said... We're not, we're not trying to get anywhere. And they have more wins. They got more wins than this fraudulent Laker team. All right, now part B of this. Is it true that this season helped substantiate that the title LeBron is credited with in Los Angeles is fool's gold? Yes, 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 yes to infinity. I'm nodding my head. I'm nodding my head yes, all right? This season, what it does for those of you in the back of the room over there, this validates that the NBA needs to put an asterisk next to that 2020 bubble title. It's baloney. It's phony baloney is what it is. The single most counterfeit title in the history of the sport of basketball. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. A direct byproduct of the Lakers having four months Almost five months off to rest up before going to a Mickey Mouse resort in Florida to win a goofy ring. And when LeBron's Lakers have had to play a full season with not a summer vacation before the playoffs, here are the results, okay? Let's walk you through it. 2019, LeBron's first year with the Lakers. They finished 37-55. and 55. They were in the draft lottery. 2020, with 142 days off, that's four months and 20 days, the Lakers get a cartoon ring. 2021. No four months off. They had to go right to the playoffs. Anthony Davis injured. Lakers eliminated in the first round by the Phoenix Suns. 2022. Lakers failed to make the playoffs. They didn't have four months off before the postseason. LeBron hurt. AD both injured. This is open and shut. It is straightforward. Good afternoon. Good evening. And good night. The jury is in. The Lakers needed a global pandemic with LeBron to get a make-believe title. And if an NBA team wins a title in an empty arena and no one is around to hear it or see it in person, does it actually count? Only casuals, only the low-information fan will say that's legit. Anybody with a brain, a knowledgeable basketball observer who knows basketball will say that's ridiculous. And this proves it. The last two years prove it overwhelming DNA evidence. All right, last word here. So would things have been different had the Lakers been healthy? I've been hearing this from my friends who are historians. The Laker lapdogs, and many of them in the media, by the way, these are people I know in the media, who are like, wow, they, they play the Yabbit game. Yabbit, 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 Yabbit. Yeah, but if only LeBron had stayed healthy. Yeah, but, but if only AD had played more games. There's a traffic signal, and it's flashing a red light. Stop. S-T-O-P. Stop. Here's what LeBron did and the Lakers. You bought a Clydesdale with three legs and put it in the Kentucky Derby and expected to win the Kentucky Derby. Old players and injury-prone players live up to the reputation on the back of the cardboard playing card. They get hurt. LeBron has started 56 games this season. And by the way, here's the biggest indictment of all for those that are saying, yeah, but if only they'd stayed healthy. LeBron has played 56 games. The Lakers have a losing record with LeBron. They're six games under 500. The Unibrow has started 40 games for the Lakers, and they are six games under 500, 17 to 23. Now, Russell Westbrook, he's been the model of health. He's had uh, neurosis. He thinks that L.A., he's being run out of L.A. by the Laker historians that are booing him, calling him Westbrook. 
And uh, he's played in uh, the majority of the games. And the Lakers have a 397 winning percentage with Westbrook in the lineup. It's hitting you right between your eyes. It is clear and obvious. We have also looked at the long-term weather forecast for the Laker franchise. It is cloudy with a chance chance of meatballs. Actually, not even meatballs. I think I think it's raining down sulfur is what it's doing right now. Basketball Armageddon. They're flying through some dark clouds. Anthony Davis is Humpty Dumpty. You got Humpty Dumpty. You're connected to that. LeBron James' body can't handle the rigors of a full season. He ain't getting any younger. And Russell Westbrook, the stat bandit, West Brick, with a, another $40 million season on the contract. And so you can get rid of him. Somebody will take Westbrook, but they'll give you a truck full of garbage in return. And there's no draft pick walking through that door to save the day. The franchise should be taken to the butcher's slaughterhouse at this point. Ineptitude and clumsiness. And it, listen, you made a deal with the devil. And congratulations, you got a, a cheap, bogus a championship. Nobody counts. Who knows basketball? And LeBron, his nickname is King James. But at this point, as long as he's with the Lakers, and this is his doing, LeBron. LeBron, King James, he's now the King James of turds, right? King turd of crap mountain. I mean, boy, do they stink. Again, na-na-na-na, na-na-na-na, hey, goodbye. It's over. They're the worst, the worst of the worst. Unreal. The, the NBA have been playing for how many years? And this is the worst team? The worst team expected to be good in the history of that sport? Holy cannoli. That's on LeBron. This ends the debate. Michael Jordan? Michael? Anybody who thought, well, LeBron better than about oh, This is LeBron. This is his legacy. This is it right here? Wow. Embarrassing. You get to wear the paper bag on your head is what you get to do.